Earlier today, Fallout 76 received its Patch 13 update. This brought sweeping changes to almost every aspect of the game. Some of these being really cool and great additions, other ones definitely being met with some controversy. In this update, they actually added a $7 fridge to the game, which not too many people are happy about. I made a separate video on that one. There's a lot to discuss about it, and I wanted to keep this one just focused on some of the other less drama-filled aspects of the update. So in this, I'm gonna give you a pretty comprehensive look at all of the new things that were added or changed, or at least all the new major things that were changed. As I would actually say, outside of the controversy around the Atomic Shop stuff, this is a pretty good update to the game. Although just before we jump into that, I do want to share a message from today's video sponsor, introducing Raid Shadow Legends, the game that is already a mega hit, a phenomena, a blockbuster, well, you get me. Get real, raw, dark, epic, and awesome. Raid Shadow Legends will take you to the world of dark fantasy and realism. For those who don't know, Raid Shadow Legends Legends is a brand new collection RPG game that is taking the mobile gaming landscape by storm. More than 10 million players worldwide have enjoyed the game in less than 6 months. So what does Raid offer? It gives you the ability to unlock over 400 champions and use them in a fully voiced story campaign. You can see the details on some of the various champions. My favorite champion continues to be the Crusader, large in part due to his really useful abilities. Raid is totally free and very popular with over 300,000 reviews on the Play Store and holds an almost perfect score. The game is growing super fast and check out this cool roadmap that they've published. They actually have huge plans for updates in the game for over 6 months so there's an infinite amount of content for you to enjoy and no time to get bored. Some of the things they're adding are a new faction, a tag team arena feature, and even a new clan boss that you'll be able to fight with some of your clan mates. Go to the video description now, click on the special links, and you'll be able to get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion shard as part of the new player program to start your journey. So one of the first things you might notice about this when you log in is there was actually some changes to the power armor system. Basically, Bethesda describes how previously some of the power armor frames may have been stacked, so when you log in, you might find you have an extra power armor frame, or even one of your existing frames now has all the parts just sitting in your inventory. I personally didn't have anything happen in this regard, but although that was changed and there were some overarching power armor changes, we still don't see a power armor bug fix. If you're not familiar, for basically a month now, there's been a bug in game where sometimes when you exit power armor, you just can't move anymore. It's fairly game breaking in the sense that you have to restart the game or disconnect from the server to actually fix it. And even though Bethesda almost patched this a week ago, they found some other issues with that update and even today it's still not fixed. So if you're hoping for that, we're gonna have to wait at least a little bit longer. One of the other big changes that you'll notice as you log in is actually to the map of Fallout 76. Many of the icons look different for camps and events and one of the big reasons for this was we actually got the addition of public events. So public events are actually some of the existing events in game, actually kind of being recategorized and getting some additional features. I'm not going to run through every one, but most of the big ones, Free Range, the Arcos Pharma event, the Scorch Beast Queen, Biting the Imposter Sheep Squatch, all of those will now be public events, as well as many, many others, as you're seeing in the background. You'll be able to tell it's a public event in a couple of ways. First and foremost, it'll pop up on screen for everyone on the server. Secondly, on the map, let's say you join a server later, it'll actually have an exclamation point in the middle. And this comes with several changes. As you click on it, you'll see a bunch of different information. You'll be able to see how many people are there, how long ago it started, the difficulty. You also can fast travel to these for free now. And although there's some other minor stuff that I won't bore you with, really the big change around this is it's getting some of these events, the public ones in particular, a lot more attention. So they're typically way more active than they were previously. Now at an event that may before have only had one or two people at it, you'll find five, six, seven. There's way more of a community focus around these and it's actually a really really cool update. A lot of this content was relatively dead, you could find yourself having to do it alone and that's just not fun, especially for some of the harder ones. Now it's going to have a lot more people. Most of the time this is awesome, for some of them it is a little bit frustrating, people are farming out those events and now there's way more people making it harder to farm, but overall this is actually a really good change and I would say adds in a lot more value to some of this older content, making it a lot more playable and fun to play nowadays. Although a big question mark with this new feature is will it last? A lot of the time when a new event comes out and it's novel and cool, there's always a ton of activity, almost to a harmful degree, like there's way too many people here kind of taking away some of the fun and challenge. Right now, this new event feature is new. A lot of people are using it, taking advantage of it, but in two, three weeks, will it still be this way? With the way it's implemented, I'm pretty hopeful the answer will be yes. Maybe some people don't participate as much, but I imagine overall we'll see a higher participation rate in public events than we ever did previously. Outside of that, the other major addition with this update 
update was the new Battle Royale map. So technically this is not a new new map, you could find it in Adventure Mode. It is a cutout of Morgantown and the area surrounding it, but for the Battle Royale mode we haven't seen this yet. We previously were on the Flatwoods map, now we're on the Morgantown one. Despite the Flatwoods map still being there, as of right now if you play Battle Royale you will only gain access to this new map. It's not like there's an option to switch to one or the other, they cycle, it's just the new one for now. But as I did mention that this should be changed in the future, hopefully there'll be some way to actually select one or the other, or it'll just naturally give you one of the two randomly. But this too is actually a really cool addition. I was kind of wary about how big of a change this would be for Battle Royale, but it is a pretty big one. The new map feels distinctive. As Bethesda described in their own post, it actually has a lot more high peaks, so places to climb, giving you a lot more options as far as sniping goes, but also watching out for snipers. It does have some similar kind of barren areas like Flatwoods, but in the center of this map is a major urban area. This really impacts gameplay. You'll be running around buildings trying to get into combat, and it's kind of a focal point for a lot of action all at the same time. Although similar to the Flatwoods section in the old map, this one is a lot more built up. It feels a lot denser and actually is really fun to play around in. I would say what this map needed to be was refreshing and different, and it definitely accomplishes that. The two maps give you a distinctive feel in Battle Royale, and fortunately, with the addition of this new map, there's quite a few additional players, meaning that you'll typically get fuller matches, which is one of the big problems this mode was facing. With this new map, there's also the addition of several new creatures and new weapons. You can find the Grafton monster Assaultrons, and other things like a Gauss rifle, which is actually really powerful, and also the Assaultron head, which also has some serious potential for this mode. Although something that's kind of weird about this new map, it's obviously very urbanized compared to the past one, but like the past one, you can't actually go into any of the buildings. With this new map, for me at least, I noticed that a lot more. Just walking up to a door, going to open it, and be like, oh, no, right, you can't do that in this mode. Some doors, of course, do function, but any of the doors that would take you to an interior don't do anything. And a couple of times, it certainly takes you out of things. You have to walk all the way around that building rather than just being able to cut through it. There are also some new rewards you can get as a result of playing on this map and completing some of the challenges, many of these being Vault Tech University themed, which is one of the locations you find in the new map. One of the other really major change coming to Battle Royale is actually now it features global matchmaking. In the past, when you got matchmade, it would be local to your country or potentially even to your specific region. That's gone now. Seemingly, you could connect to almost everyone. So if you're in the US, you might notice you're playing with Australian people or European people. This is kind of a double-edged sword, I would say. Obviously, there are definitive ping concerns around this, but as of late, the mode has seen a serious player count issue, and this is a good way to attempt to resolve that. So far, I haven't noticed any big issues as far as lag goes, but of course the potential for that is there, but it's going to be one of those things that I think you really have to keep your eye on and try and decide whether or not it's a positive change for the mode overall. With this update, there was actually a lot of just kind of miscellaneous changes that are kind of useful or handy. Energy weapons now have the ability to actually use armor penetration. Right now, there's a glitch with the awareness perk, so it doesn't reflect in the visuals on these, but if you have armor penetration mods, perks, or even the legendary effect, your legendary weapons will be doing more damage to enemies now, which is definitely good. Some of the other things, they actually added in the functionality to now craft hazmat suits. There's also a new small backpack added to the game. This is meant to be for early game players that don't have access to the regular backpack. You could find a plan for it in the Morgantown airport. It'll give you half as much carry weight at max rank, but it's kind of weird. Visually, it's identical to the regular backpack. The small and regular look the same, but in order to actually get the full carry weight on the small backpack, you have to craft a level 50 version. Of course, meaning you have to be level 50. Although this is geared towards lower level players, I feel like most people that achieve level 50 have a decent chance of being able to get access to the regular backpack anyway, so it's kind of in a weird spot right now. Of course, at early levels, you can get a worse version, giving you like an extra 10 carry weight, and that still is good. It's better than not having it. But I feel like on the small backpack, the max level should be more like 25, 30. So you can gain that extra 30 carry weight at that level rather than having to wait all the way to level 50. In crafting tables now, you could actually see how many mods you still have left to learn. It'll just show you how many you have learned already and how many you still have to learn. It won't tell you specifically what those are, but it is very handy for those of you trying to get all of the mods for certain weapons or armors. At the legendary vendor now, there's been several items added. Most of these are DLC items that you previously couldn't get a legendary variant of. This is a really good change. When you get to the late game of Fallout 76, you basically have to be using legendary items. This is basically making some of those items accessible or functional now for high level players, where previously you kind of just had to ignore them because it wasn't worth it, or they were so much worse than the alternatives. Although it still is one of the 
those things that probably should have just been there since release. Many of these items have been out for like four or five months now. And again, for a lot of the player base, they were pretty worthless or not super usable for four or five months. Hopefully going forward, we'll see a more proactive approach in adding new items to legendary item lists. Vault 94 will now give you more experience for completing it on the various modes. This not actually being from taking down the enemies, but just from completing it overall. The very controversial atomic shop displays at vendors have been removed. A lot of people are really upset about these. I personally didn't actually think it was that big of a deal, but now at all the train stations in the game, you won't see an in-game advertisement for the atomic shop. But speaking of which, the atomic shop also got several interesting updates. We got a bit of a facelift and visual change on all the items as you could see in the background, but even further, just some general new additions, several of which look cool. Of course, the aforementioned pay to win items that not too many people are happy about, but also something known as wallpaper. So this is actually an item totally new to Fallout 76, and basically it allows you to apply a texture to the inside of your camp walls. It is a pretty cool idea. Again, it is pretty much all locked behind a paywall as of right now, and it kind of functions as you'd expect with wallpaper. Outside of that, there were some other miscellaneous bug fixes. There was actually a lot in this category. I don't have nearly enough time to go through all of them, but you gotta appreciate the effort on Bethesda's side. They certainly are patching a lot of existing or current bugs, but it's definitely not a bug-free game. Even just while recording this video, I encountered a lot. For whatever reason, after this update, every single time I try and play the game, I have to re-log into my account, which is kind of infuriating. I had this weird sky bug where like the sky didn't spawn in one time. The usual of some enemies having their health regen after attacking them. The looping gunfire bug that was supposed to be fixed, but never actually was. And one of the most dangerous was actually one in Nuclear Winter, where after switching from one weapon to another, then back to the original weapon, the ammo count was at zero, despite the fact that I had previously reloaded that weapon. So in a pinch, even if you had all of your guns reloaded, it would give you zero ammo, which again, could be life or death in that mode. Just looking at the update overall, I would actually say it's an interesting one in the sense that it's actually a pretty good update to Fallout 76, but of course, one that's going to be clouded in the controversy that is these new pay to win items added to the game. The new map for Nuclear Winter is actually pretty good. If you haven't been playing that mode too often, I would at least jump in and give it a try. There's actually a lot more people playing, so that means a lot of the people aren't as good. But looking ahead, we enter into a pretty interesting stage for Fallout 76. Most of the big stuff is over, at least for this DLC wave. Today, they also made an announcement around something new known as Project Clean Appalachia, which is basically going to provide weekly events. Most of them are pretty simple, like you get extra experience, but then if you actually do certain things as a community, you'll get extra rewards. It'll definitely be cool and fun. I'll talk more about it in a full video tomorrow, along with other things from this update. But as far as it seems, we really don't have anything until Wastelanders in a couple of months. There's still some lingering issues with the game that hopefully we see getting patched. The power armor bug, of course, being one of the major ones. But otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always, again, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this, found it informative. But with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.